Hello all. I'm just going to show you the shop air system that I've installed. And I've got to start with a very strong disclaimer. The system I've installed is not approved for use with compressed air. It's a trick that farmers have been using for decades of using uh, plastic domestic water pipe and fittings. It's rated for the pressure, um, but it has not been approved for use with compressed air. Now there was a system on the market that used this pipe. Um, I can't find the details to hand, but I did research it previously. And they were using pipe of identical dimensions, identical material, and identical pressure rating, um, with some slightly different fittings, which still didn't um, really differ in the way they sealed. They just used an O-ring um, and a collet to grip the pipe. Um, so as far as I'm concerned the system is safe but because it doesn't have approval with air you couldn't use it in a commercial situation um, or in any situation where you had to have insurance to cover um, employees. Um, so you know you can research it yourself um, and make your own mind up whether you think it's safe enough for you to use but I'll show you what I've, I've done and you can take whatever you want from it. I've got a rather temporarily suspended regulator at the moment. Um, this is a um, half inch BSP inlet and outlet regulator, so it's a high flow regulator um, with adapters down to 3 8 and this is 10 mil bore hose. So up there I've got a quick disconnect uh, Euro high flow um, fitting. And if I zoom in, little brass unit um, is a wall plate or tap bib. I don't like the plastic versions of these very much. Um, uh, I tried one and had problems um, getting it to seal, so I spent a little bit of extra money. And I actually bought these a very long time ago, several years ago. Upgraded to the brass and this was a length of pipe that I actually got off eBay um, as the remainder of a reel and I think I paid 99p for it. You can see it sweeps around ducks under the I-beam and the piece of blue pipe dangling down runs across to another tap bib um, uh, because I did decided to do my drops um, down to a convenient level with uh, flexible pipe and obviously I've yet to install the tee up over there uh, now it runs down to a slightly odd position excuse me Partly because that's where there is a truss for me to screw it up into and partly because that's how much contiguous length of pipe I had. And what I'd done initially is I just ran a length of the yellow 10mm hose um, off fitting up there and threw a hole in the wall to the little storage that I've got outside under the, uh, the sort of roof extension there. So I've obviously got to put some more clips on and uh, some of them on standoffs to support the pipe. But I, I actually ran like this for about two weeks before deciding I really ought to complete a very old project which we shall go and have a look at next. So first of all we see my old faithful FIAC compressor which I've had for about 30 years. Long term subscribers may remember back, a few years I think, um, to me installing the, uh, the concrete foundations for this vertical tank Clark. Uh, 4 horsepower, 150 litre. Now 
you know, I uh, I wanted to quieten this down, and initially I was building a cabinet for the whole thing. I uh, changed my mind on that, but it was one of those projects I didn't have a desperate immediate need for it, so it had fallen by the wayside. I'd made a frame for the motor and compressor head, uh, which are on uh, resilient mounts, and um, that stalled for a long time. I then did some of the work on the enclosure, and then that had stalled for a long time. Um, but now that I really have a need for more air, you know, the old FIAC, it does pretty well. Um, but it's only a three horsepower. Was struggling to produce enough air, or it would end up running almost continuously, particularly when using a blasting cabinet. So I wanted to get the four horse done. So up at the top here, having resilient mounted the compressor, I then needed a flexible air discharge hose which also had to be able to stand high temperatures. So this is a convoluted bore, uh, sorry, smooth bore convoluted PTFE liner with a stainless steel overbraid hydraulic hose. So this is rated for over 200 degrees C and up to 100 odd bar. So 10 bar isn't going to trouble it. Um, I did just about manage to get a bit of 15mm um, copper pipe bent. It's not very well done because uh, I don't have um, the proper pipe bending tools. Next time I see a, um, a plumber's van in the street I shall try and catch them for a quick job. So at, at the bottom uh, it uses a male 60 degree cone on the end of the uh, one way valve and I managed to put a flare on the end of the pipe. The bulkhead fitting has got female 60 degree cones for standard hydraulic fittings and I managed to make a standard domestic water pipe um, olive compression fitting seal quite successfully in there. It's got a tiny little leak but that's also because the pipe's distorted where I bent it. Um, I think I actually got that to stop leaking. And what next? Uh, oh yes, I, I machined a little fitting there and welded it up to replace the air cleaner and led that down to a bulkhead fitting that I made and that runs down to currently the original air cleaner um, and I need to build a combined silencer and air cleaner. So this enclosure obviously it's got some acoustic foaming so it's very difficult to see anything in the back there but it is um, it is fitted with a baffle system and a pair of um, fans to circulate air through the cabinet and that seems to work uh, pretty well. They run continuously all the time the compressor is powered up. The air shutoff solenoid uh, is also uh, wired to be permanently on while the compressor is powered. And then down at the bottom of the tank we have one of the cheap Chinese made automatic drain valves. Now this is the type where it has two settings one knob controls how long the valve comes on for and the second knob controls how often it operates. And I've heard people say oh they're no good because you don't want it um, regularly venting the tank all through the day if you're not otherwise using any air because eventually the compressor will come on for no reason. Well of course the solution is quite easy. The power supply to that solenoid is wired in parallel with the motor. 
So the valve simply comes on for half a second every time the motor starts to automatically drain any moisture from the tank. The solenoid was a bit interesting. It was a cheap Chinese solenoid, but um, they seem to have quite a good reputation, except I discovered that this 240 volt version ran incredibly hot. The dome nut on, on top there was getting up to about 80 degrees C. And I, I bought two of them because I want one um, to foot pedal operate my blast cabinet because the original pneumatic foot pedal died. When I examined the valve I found that the bobbin was only about 50% wound with copper. Um, I also found that some of the um, the other valves on the market were going to be running uh, nearly as hot. I mean the the actual magnet wires um, probably rated for 150 degrees C but you know I didn't like the idea of a continuous duty valve because you know essentially this might get turned on at the beginning of the day and left on until the end um, I, I didn't want it running that hot what I actually did was take the coils off both of the valves and heated them both up, powered them for a little while to warm them up which allowed me to um, get the, the binding tape off and I actually wound more turns onto this solenoid using wire from the other solenoid having measured the wire so that I could order in a reel of wire to rewind that one and I kind of got bored, I didn't wind all the um, the coils off the other solenoid onto this one. Oh, I should back up and said, I did some tests and I'd actually found they would pull in at a hun um, 110 volt AC. But any in any case, I got this one probably three quarters of the turns off the other solenoid. And it now runs at about 50 degrees C. Um, so it's much more satisfactory. So you can see um, short stub running up to a T. That's running across to an elbow through the wall. This run is a little short. It was an off cut. But I'm going to put a, a, a shut off valve in that run which will then extend it. Another run comes up here and all of these plywood uh, trusses that support the roof extension I just used a hole saw to use them as the support so I have a T here with a spur running inside the machine shop and a second one down here and then at the moment this is capped but is available for me to extend if I want and these fittings I found they're sealing no problem at all um, they're only hand tightened and they're nowhere near as, as tight as they can go and I've had no problem getting them to seal so if we go inside, we can see the run coming through, again to a wall plate or tap bib which is just capped off at the moment, and there's a second one over here so these are very central and again I'll be using you know braided PVC tubing to distribute down to you know dust off air for the lathe and the mill and I might even get around to installing the uh, the Kurt power drawbar that I've got lurking around here somewhere 
And uh, oh yeah, that's my little Aldi compressor, um, which now it's no longer being used for the, the main shop air was just running the blowgun. And uh, I mean this this thing's given very good service. It's light enough that you can actually pick it up and carry it, but has been superseded by a uh, uh, a portable air tank that I can simply charge up and wheel out. So that's where we are with the shop air system, and uh, yeah. Not having all this space taken up by a compressor is really rather nice.